wire grass. Wow. If you ever get that in your flower garden with your trees and shrubs, perennials and annuals, it's not easy to control. It is a perennial. It comes back year after year after year. And where it mainly comes from is your lawn. It, it's in a lot of lawn that people have older lawns and when you cut your lawn at three and a half inches to four inches you really don't see what is known as wire grass also called Bermuda grass so if you go to Florida Bermuda Texas uh, they grow it as a lawn at our place um, in St. Thomas it loves warm weather it does die back to the ground every year uh, and it turns brown up oh, and here is my garden hat whitey uh, whitey follows me everywhere in the garden and some people spray paint their lawns during the winter months because in florida and texas california it turns brown one of the telltale signs that you have wire grass or Bermuda grass is that it grows along. Now, this is a little tall. It's not normally this tall, but it grows along your soil. So if I go in and I try to dig it, And it has these long runners. And we'll see if we've got a good one here. I think this is a better one. It has these long runners that grow along the surface of your lawn. And this one's about three feet. And if you look, it grows a little bit, then it roots. It grows a little more and roots, grows a little more, and then it roots in. And it actually starts sending roots into your soil that are anywhere from three to ten inches deep. Now, the good thing is, Roundup will control this. Uh, some people use a special weed killer for Bermuda grass or wire grass that might be in their lawns. Uh, people with uh, seasoned turf grasses, um, like we have in Virginia. Uh, we have a lot of uh, fescues and uh, different types of uh, grass that makes up our lawn. So there are weed killers that will just kill wire grass. But it probably takes two applications. This is a summer growing weed. This is a weed that grows in the summer or the heat of the summer. The more the heat, the better it grows. And so if you're going to try to control it, always read the label it's more and more confusing now on labels because years ago when um, there was a product uh, in since a product now has a good brand name they're using what we call weed killers um, that may have been only made up of one or two items now it could make up 10 or 12 different items. So they use for different things. So you have to completely read the label. So if you spray your lawn, you don't hurt your lawn. And uh, the other thing you can do is just by hand in a little area, you can pull it. In a flower garden, we will very carefully uh, use a weed killer 
to control Bermuda grass and not get it on any other plants. Sometimes uh, we'll just spray that weed when it's not windy and then it will kill that uh, weed that you're really looking to get rid of. I have some other weeds in here. I have what is known as giant what it's called, giant foxtail, has a big seed head, and I'm going to see, I don't know if this is going to work or not, but we're going to make this giant foxtail walk, so you just come in here, and you just, and it just, as the hairs only go in one direction. And so if you just tap on it, it will walk like a caterpillar. Well, a little entertainment for today. I'm Mark Viet and I live in the Shenandoah Valley of Virginia. It's also a pain to have in your lawns. And a lot of people will pull it by hand and they think they've accomplished a lot and all of a sudden five or six weeks later there's more of them so maybe you had 10 stems but then you go back a couple weeks later and you've got 30 or 40. you've actually multiplied it by pulling it out or digging it out now i remember my grandfather uh, I kind of grew up in some winters in St. Thomas. And when my grandfather would have me pull the yellow nuts edge, he had a screen with wooden sides. And he made me sift the soil so I could get all the little tubers. I guess, yeah, they're probably tubers, out of the soil and the tubers make up part of the yellow nut sedge. So, and what we're gonna see is some of those little tubers right against my shirt here. And they all are in the soil. There's probably 10 or 20. So what happens when you pull a weed? So let's make believe this is the weed here. If you look carefully, you can see a little tuber right at the end of that shoe. And so when you pull your weeds by hand, you are leaving this, or a better example of a bigger one, in the ground. And so you, I see one, two, three, four, five. So to control this weed, you need to make sure that, you, and so what those little tubers look like, this is a perennial, it's not an annual. An annual germinates and grows in one year, and then within that year, it dies. This is a perennial. So what happens is, you have that tuber, which is right at the tip, grow into this. And so when you're trying to pull this weed out of the ground, you're leaving all of these. There's a couple right here. Here's one, here's another one. So what you're doing is leaving because when you pull the weed, these break off. 
and they produce more weeds for you for next year. That is why yellow nutsedge is hard to get rid of. So, generically, I'm going to mention what you shouldn't use. Roundup really doesn't work on nutgrass. But there are nutsedge killers. So, it might say nutsedge killer, nutsedge destroyer. And some of the nutsedge uh, controls, what they do is they just keep your nutsedge from spreading. So it kind of just keeps it in its place. So it's really not a complete control. It does not kill the nutsedge. There is a product, um, and I believe it's $370 for just a little bit of what is known as the nuts edge killer. Uh, my friend did always read the label, but my friend used it on her lawn. And after two applications, it killed all the yellow nuts edge. So you can go ahead and get nuts edge killers and, um, and they will help control your nuts edge so you won't be out there because to weed this it would probably take a half a day 